Hey, what is going on, guys? It's the Short Sports Show. I'm your host, Daniel Short. Today is Monday, June 9th, 2014. <sighs> Got a really a short show. Obviously, the short sports show. No, but we got a um, jam-packed of college football and NFL news and then talk a little bit about the NBA Finals with the Miami Heat and San Antonio Spurs. That's about it. Um, so it might be a, a little bit shorter than most shows uh, have been the past few weeks. But first, go ahead and jump straight into the college football. And Texas A&M, Arizona, Northwestern will sell more generic jerseys this year. A&M will sell the number 12 jersey, as in the 12th man. Uh, they sell tons of number 2 jerseys, as we remember the past two seasons, because of uh, that, that one guy. You know, the one, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, yeah, Johnny Manziel. Um, so they'll no longer sell number 2 jersey. So if you already have a number 2 jersey, keep it, frame it. Either, you know, you keep it for the rest of your life, or you might be able to sell it somewhere and make a pretty good amount of money off of it. Uh, but anyways, A and M will keep uh, keep just selling number twelve jerseys. That's it. No matter what, uh, no more player jerseys. If anybody else, also Northwestern will only sell jersey number fifty one, uh, which was used by current head coach Pat Fitzgerald during his playing career. Um, and then Arizona will use uh, number fourteen, as in two thousand fourteen. Those are the only jerseys they will sell. Um, you know, they're not the only ones. The Florida Gators um, have only sold number 1, 15, and 96 after the 2006 National Championship seasons. You know, since then, they've just been selling those three jerseys. And uh, I'm pretty sure you can guess who wore 15. Um, but, you know, more and more teams, because they don't want to get in this legal trouble, whatever, with the players wearing, you know, the jersey numbers and trying to make money off of them or something. Now there's being strict on what number so you might see more more schools selling just number 99s 98 97 you know some random number 47 something that most players most star players don't really wear and, and just sell it from there um, but i like the idea you know maybe just go by the year you know 14 15 um stuff like that other news is the big 12 and byu uh, the BYU would love to join the Big 12, according to head coach Bronco Mendenhall, saying, uh, "Well, wants to wants to join the Big 12, according to the Austin American Statesman, saying, quote, we would love to be in the Big 12. We would love to be a member of that conference. I think it would make a lot of sense. Our attendance is, is high enough. We have a winning percentage that's high enough. We have an entire Salt Lake City and Utah market as well as a worldwide following because of the church. There'll be a ton to offer the Big 12 because of its money-generated world right now. You're talking about an amazing kind of brand, in quote. And personally, I love the idea of BYU going to the Big 12. I think it'd be a great addition. Um, but sadly, according to the Austin, Austin American Statesman, uh, citing two sources reported that the idea of BYU, um, of the Big 12 adding BYU, is has very little support according to Big 12 officials, and that's sad. Um, Big 12, it only has 10 schools right now, and really would have only had eight if TCU and West Virginia didn't join. Now, obviously, both of those schools were looking for bigger and better conferences, and it was smart for them to join, but, you know, Big 12, you're not even you're not even 12 schools. You're really the Big 10, and the Big 10 is going to have, what, 14 schools now? You've got to jump in and start bringing some schools, some quality schools in. And BYU is a quality school, and more than just a quality school. They're a great school to bring in with all athletics that they bring and off the field stuff. It'd be a great addition for the Big Twelve to add. Um, you know, personally, you know, Big Twelve being one of my favorite conferences, obviously because of TCU. I would love to see BYU, Houston, SMU, Miami, and Clemson all join the Big 12 because with all this conference realignment and what's going to happen within the next several years, Big 12 can easily flop out. Even with the big schools like Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, TCU, they can easily drop down if they don't start bringing some schools in. And, you know, if you bring in BYU, you get, the, you know, a, a Western market that you don't really have. 
bring in Houston and SMU, bring in the what you know the what made the conference so great when you had you know uh, SMU when they were really good, uh, and Houston back in the Southwest Conference days. Bring them back in, have more you know expand your Texas market. You already have big schools there, but bring them in, get the rivalry rivalries go, back going, um, and also having Miami and Clemson. Reason for having Miami have a Florida market. You know, I, I know there was talk but what before last season that Miami and Florida State were interested in joining the Big 12 or, you know, vice versa. Uh, Big 12 really wanting both of those schools to join. It'd be smart. The ACC is really not a t- – I don't see it as a Power 5 conference. I really don't. Uh, other than, you know, Florida State being there and Clemson, Miami, e, off and on, that's about it. So having Miami join and or Florida State would be huge for the Big 12. You're talking about big schools. You know, Oklahoma's already been playing Florida State for the past several, several years, uh, having home-and-home home series. Um, having Miami there, huge for recruiting. Uh, even brings in more money because you're adding bigger schools. And having Clemson, why not? Why not? I like Clemson. I, I think they would offer something in you know, recruiting and geographically. I think it kind of makes sense being the Big 12 being – Right in the central, add some Western teams, as in, you know, BYU. Don't go as far, any farther than BYU. And then, you know, having Clemson and Miami be in the far east. I think it makes sense. I would love to see that. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, if, you know, you would be a fan of having those schools join the Big 12 or other schools joining Big 12 or different conferences. It's fun. It's fun talking about different conferences and mixed matching schools. I don't know. I find it fun. Anyways, other news came out to, uh, this past weekend uh, is to stay or leave. Looking back at Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll's time at USC, Pete Carroll told the Los Angeles Times that he would not have left the Trojans in January of 2010 if he knew that what penalties the NCAA was going to impose after a determined running back Reggie Bush and his family received money and other benefits from sports marketers saying, quote, the truth was an opportunity came up, and it was one I couldn't turn away from. Uh, I acknowledged that uh, what was coming, we thought maybe it, was, uh, it wasn't something coming because they didn't have anything to get us with. It wasn't five days, it wasn't five weeks, it was five years. If we had known uh, that, the, that it was imminent, I would have never been able to leave under those circumstances. Um, excuse me. When I look back now, I would have stayed there to do what I needed to do to resolve the problem. I never thought there were any facts that would impose significant sanctions. And we all know what happened then. USC was hit with a two-year bowl ban, lost 30 scholarships over three years, and had to vacate its 20. Or excuse me, 2004. Uh, 2004 national championship and all 12 wins in 2005 and then later uh, in the article when he was asked when P. Carroll was asked about leaving he said I didn't feel bad about leaving at all I didn't feel bad about it because I knew what the truth was so all in all what he's saying there is that if he knew exactly what was going to happen what all the sanctions were he would have stayed at USC Never would have left to go to the NFL. Never would have joined the Seahawks. Possibly the Seahawks and or B. Carroll would never have a Super Bowl. It's crazy. It's crazy. He said that he would have stayed. He would try to fix the what happened at USC. He would try to you know, continue the success there even with the sanctions that were placed on him. That he would continue to stay there and go through that rough time and then beginning going back to the success they were having at USC. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, obviously, if you think back, you got to look back. Take away you know, what you know right now about the Super Bowl and stuff. Take back, go back to when he was there and the success that USC was having with him. And also look back at his time in, in the NFL before, this, uh, before Seattle. It was one year with the Jets, wasn't that good, then he was gone. You know, and then when he got something really great going, you know, not knowing that the sanctions were about to happen, when he got something great happening at USC, and the players you're getting, the, you're producing NFL players, 
everything's rocking good. Do you really want to take that chance and lead to the NFL? And then when you know sanctions are about to happen, but you don't know how severe they can possibly be, do you want to go back and possibly become a failure again in the NFL? Or just stay and just take what happens at USC like the players had to? I don't know. I still like Pete Carroll. I'm, I'm, you know, the decision he made was probably for the best. He won a Super Bowl with Seattle. Seattle's doing great. He's getting paid well. Things are going in his favor. USC right now, I think we're about a year or two from them being back on top again. Uh, but that's it for college football news. Moving on to the NFL, the Chicago Bears signed former Panthers quarterback Jimmy Clausen. The Bears now have five quarterbacks on the roster. And Jimmy Clausen, I never liked him. I never did. Not when he was at Notre Dame. When he was drafted to Carolina, I thought, you know, knew he was going to be a bust. I'm sure a lot of people did. And then, and then what really made me not like Jimmy Clausen was when Cam Newton was drafted. Cam Newton wore two, number, the number two jersey in Auburn, and I believe even at uh, Blinn Junior College. You know, goes to the NFL, says, hey, I want to wear number two. I'm going to compete with you for a starting job, but we all knew Cam Newton was going to become the starter. So, you know, let me wear number two, and I'll pay you. Jimmy Clausen had said, no, number two is my jersey. And did Jimmy Clausen even wear number two in college? I feel like he wore like seven or something. I don't think he wore two. But either way, you know, it's like, why? Why would you do that? And, and then, you know, obviously Cam Newton's had more success than Jimmy Clausen has, and it's just not right. Uh, but the NFL spokesperson Brian McCarthy said Thursday that the league is focusing on, the, on New, York, New York City, Chicago, and Los Angeles as possible locations for the 2015 draft. However, according to multiple sources, NYC is likely out of contention. Other cities under consideration, including Dallas, Houston, Nashville, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Boston, um, you know, are cities that they're looking at and asking as much information because they want a clear timetable when the draft can be and, and booking them, no other scheduling things. And that's the main problem with New York. Um, you know, the NFL has tried to stay in New York. They knew that they can't stay in, in, in Radio City Hall. They're going to look at um, Madison Square Garden, but you know the Knicks play there, and so do um, the Rangers, the hockey team. Then they're looking at Brooklyn, but the Nets play there, and then it's all this other stuff. Even though it's like, you know, Knicks probably aren't going to make the playoffs. Nets, uh, you know, Nets have made it, so they, they might be pretty good next year. So you're kind of just that area is just out. And now you're looking at other cities, Chicago and L.A. being the number one and two. And then the other cities, Dallas, Houston, Nashville, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Boston. All really good spots. All really good spots. And if it goes to Dallas, guarantee you I'm going to be there for 2015 draft. Come to Dallas. I really hope Dallas can take it. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, and also, also McCarthy said that the NFL will likely move the draft date back to late April which is where it needs to be. And hopefully, maybe we can get it back to just two days, not three days. Just have it back to two days, two days in April. Be amazing if we could do that. Doubt it. Uh, Also, the Houston Texans signed Jadavion Clowney on Friday. The number one overall pick will get $22.272 million. Guaranteed. That's to be exact for you. Including a $14.5 million signing bonus, according to the Houston Chronicle. (sighs) Jadavion Clowney. Wow. One thing I don't like, and I I think I said it before, is the Houston Texans gave Clowney the number 90 jersey. That was Mario Williams' number. Clowney plays the same position, was the same pick as as, uh, Mario Williams. Come on now. Give him him 97, at least because Clowney wore 7 in college. Let Jadavion Clowney wear 97. Don't, Don't try to... I feel like it's a comparison. Maybe I'm the only one comparing them, so it's my fault. But I feel like they're trying to compare Clowney to Mario Williams, and they both wear the same, you know, the same number now, same position, same pick overall. Come on now, let's get some, let's you know let's change it up a little bit. Uh, also, for anybody that plays the Madden NFL games, this is pretty big news. As Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman will grace the cover of this year's upcoming Madden 15 game. 
Sherman and Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton, who actually plays a lot of Madden, uh, were the finalists in the online voting at ESPN.com. Uh, Richard Sherman becomes the second Seahawks player to be on the cover um, as running back Sean Alexander uh, was on the cover in 2007. But it leads to the question of, is this good for Seahawks fans and is it good for Richard Sherman? Now, sure, as fans, for as Seattle, Seattle Seahawks fans, you can cheer and say, hey, my my team's player is on the cover. I'm going to buy it. I got him on the cover. This is my team. It's representing blah, blah, blah. But there's a thing called a Madden curse. Since the game started featuring players in, 20, uh, in 2000, some of the winners have experienced really bad years or injuries uh, the season they appeared or a mix of both, or just everything could, that could go bad went bad. I'm going to list you about all of them. <laughs> because I was going through them, and I was trying to just pick a few, but I had to just list all of them. So I'm sorry, so bear with me here. And here we go. After Barry Sanders' appearance on the 2000 cover, Sanders abruptly retired from training camp, falling just short of the record for most career rushing yards. Everybody questioned why he retired, you know, you had the chance to break it. People believed that he would have broken it and just just retired. So that's one. Eddie George appeared on the 20... Uh, I keep saying like 2010. I keep wanting to say that. The 2001 cover. Uh, and the Tennessee Titans lost in the divisional round of the 2000 playoffs late in the fourth quarter when the Titans uh, down 17-10. to 10. Steve McNair, rest in peace, favorite quarterback. Pass was bobbled by Eddie George and intercepted by Ray Lewis for a touchdown, sealing the game. And Eddie George also never averaged more than 3.4 yards per carry um, for the rest of his career. Uh, the next year, Dante Culpepper led the Minnesota Vikings to the playoffs in 2000. But after appearing on the cover uh, in Madden NFL 2002, he threw 23 interceptions as the Vikings slumped to a 5 and a 5-11 record. Uh, he also tied the, for the record for the most fumbles in a single season. Uh, while his career looked back on the 2004 career season, he blew out both knees um, in 2005 and 2006 and was just terrible after that. Marshall Falk appeared on the 2003 cover. Um, and his career and the success of the St. Louis Rams Declined afterwards, he did not register another 1,000-yard rushing season, and his yards per carry average dropped from a consistent 5.4 to 4.5, 4.0, and that's it. Uh, he also started 21 out of uh, 32 games um, as of knee injuries got the better of him, and then went underwent re, uh, reconstructive uh, knee surgery in 2005 and retired the same year. 2004... Michael Vick broke his fibula in a preseason game. Falcons went 5-11. and uh, 11. And then years later was discovered that he was in an illegal dog fighting uh, ring and was sent to uh, prison. We all know the story from there. 2005, Ray Lewis, um, I'll cut these shorter now, uh, had a wrist injury. And also it was the first season Lewis never uh, recorded an interception. Next year, Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Donovan McNabb towards ACL uh, while jumping out of bounds against the Titans, ending the season, and also surf suffered a sports hernia in the first game of the season. Uh, next year, Seahawks running back Sean Alexander uh, was the league's reigning MVP, covered vote um, for Madden 07, then sustained a foot injury that caused him to miss six weeks, or six starts, excuse me, and then uh, his, his rushing statistics were just terrible after that. And he never was good again. And here's something right here that I never even knew. Never knew. In 2007, GameSpot and CNBC uh, reported that a large number of Ladanian Tomlinson fans who believed in the Madden curse were strongly opposed to the EA Sports initial decision to feature him on the cover of Madden NFL 08. Uh, so much that a fan created Save LT from Madden.com to to voice their disclaim. Tomlinson eventually declined the offer, but stated it was sorely due to contract negotiations. Now, at that time, 
uh, LT in 2006, obviously. NFL MVP um, rushed for 26 touchdowns or 20, yeah, so something like that. Um, anyways, greatest year, 2006. Love it, Chargers. <laughs> we lost to the Patriots. Okay, sorry. Um, anyways, I never knew about that. I never knew that. And I played the heck out of Madden 08. And to know that he could have been on the cover would have been awesome. It really would have, even though it could have been a lot worse. Who knows what happened to LaDainian Tomlinson. Uh, but the cover vote, or the cover did feature Vince Young for Madden 08. Do I really need to say more about Vince Young? <laughs> this is what he said. He, uh, you know, when he, he appeared on, apparently he appeared on Jimmy Kim, Kim, uh, Kimmel Live to announce that he would appear on the cover of Madden 08. And then he said that he, would, he wouldn't become the curse's next victim. He believed in it. This is what he said to quote. I've done prayed about it, and we're going to go home and try to get to the playoffs and try to get to the Super Bowl. We'll see what happens. Now, we all know what happens. He was cut um, by the Titans in 2011. Then he played for the Eagles in, in 2011 and declared the Eagles as a dream team. Finished 8-8. Eight and eight. And then 4-12 and 12 the next season. He was then released by the Eagles in spring of 2012. Was signed with the Buffalo Bills. Then was cut before the season even started with the Bills. And then he was signed with the Packers. Then was released before the regular season started. Um, and even in 2007, Vince Young stated that he would be in the Hall of Fame one day. Yeah. Um, also, Luis Castillo was appeared on the Spanish version of Madden 08 and it was it was pretty bad. He was really good defensive defensive end for the Chargers. Really really good. But sadly he broke his tibula in the first game of the NFL season then was released uh by the Chargers for a second time in 2012. Then Brett Favre was on the cover of Madden 09. We all know retired unretired, played with the Jets. It's terrible. Then the Vikings terrible uh let's see new orleans saints quarterback drew Brees, madden 11 um threw 22 interceptions that year um and then lost to the seahawks in the, in the first round of the playoffs who were seven and nine at the time madden 12 peyton hillis missed five games of the season um and then you know had all this terrible he was just terrible he should have never even got on the cover peyton hillis was the worst cover athlete of all time just no one just I, I didn't even buy that game i was so upset that's pretty bad um but there's been some good news over the past two years in madden madden 13 featured detroit lions wide receiver calvin johnson on the cover and that year there was no such thing as a curse johnson broke jerry rice jerry rice's single season receiving record um and many other records after that so he was good and it still has been good. It hasn't nothing bad to happen to him. And then Madden 25 had Vikings running back Adrian Peterson after he rushed for the 2,000 yards or almost 2,000 yards. He did pretty good last season. So maybe the curse is broken, or did it really even exist? Anyways, how will the Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman do this season? That's for you guys. Let me know. Uh, do you guys believe in the Madden curse? Oh, man, I hope it doesn't happen to Richard Sherman. really hope it doesn't happen. Last news for football, and kind of goes in with baseball, and that's Johnny Manziel. He's coming to San Diego. You know how excited I was when I read that headline? I don't know what happened. Johnny Manziel going to San Diego. Yes, what happened? How did the Chargers get him? No, I wasn't that easily fooled. I saw that Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Manziel was selected by the San Diego Padres in the 28th round of the Major League Baseball draft Saturday, uh, he was the 837th player taken. Uh, Manziel was listed as a shortstop for Texas A&M, even though he never even played for the Aggies, and he just played football. So, I don't know how that worked. The Padres, I guess they're like, hey, if football doesn't work out for you, we own your rights. Come on over. Play some baseball. You know, it'd be funny. They make a documentary for... Johnny Manziel like they did for Tom Brady with that, what was it, the sixth quarterback or Brady six. Now we can just call it Manziel 837th. Bam. Right there. Documentary. Hook it up. Um, yeah. 
I don't know why. It's to me, if I'm a baseball player that hasn't been drafted yet, I'm looking at the Padres and like that's so disrespectful. You're 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 drafting a guy that hasn't even played baseball for like forever since like high school, and I've been playing throughout college, and you didn't draft me, for real. That would be pretty bad. Um, but anyways, Johnny Manziel, San Diego, Cleveland. I don't know. Uh, the NBA Finals. Whoa, was it exciting. And this time, it wasn't as hot. Um, you know, they had the AC working, you know, all that other good stuff. Miami tied the series 1-1, uh, beating the San Antonio Spurs 98-96. LeBron James went off. 35 points, 14 points in third quarter. And I saw a thing, I was scrolling, and it was, it was you know, one of those little joke things. And it said how everybody was all excited, and the commentators were like, Oh, LeBron James, you know, went off, was, yeah, 14 points in the third quarter, rah, all this other stuff. And then the picture showed, like, half the picture on top was Kobe Bryant scores 30 points, 9 for 9 free throws, and or 9 for 9 on the field, all this other stuff. And then LeBron James is just, like, on the bottom screaming or whatever. Not trying to take anything away from the heat, but I'm just saying Kobe Bryant. Better. Anyways, game three is on Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central on ABC as the San Antonio Spurs go on the road at Miami. And Spurs got to take one on the road as well because they cannot go back to San Antonio being down 3-1. to one. Um, But it was competitive all the way through. And that is the end of today's show. I guess it wasn't, you know, I guess we fit in the right amount, 30 minutes or so. Uh, make sure you uh, follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7. Become a fan on Facebook, The Short Sports Show. A link is in the description. And if you're listening on iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, or YouTube, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, favorite, comment, all the other good stuff. Share it out to your friends and family, your peeps, everybody. Let them know where you get your sports news. And... Um, we will be back with that Bob. I can't talk. We will be back next Monday morning. Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, YouTube. I will see you guys then. God first, God bless. I am out. Money team, deuces.